I were to conduct a wife project of my own, um, I guess um, going on past experience, I want some sort of a question to filter out the crazies. If I think of going back more than 25 years now, because I've been married for 24 years, going back to the dates that didn't work out, and that's really what Don Tillman is driven by, the dates that didn't work out, every now and again you'd strike somebody who was genuinely, seriously crazy. I remember somebody going through my washing baskets and wanting to try on all my socks and, and things like that. So yeah, filter out the crazies first. For me, I'm, I'm always interested in somebody who's, um, who's got a life of their own, who doesn't, who doesn't want to attach their life to my life. Um, yes, they want to be supportive. Yes, they want my support. But um, no, they don't see themselves as primarily being about whatever I am. Let me go back to that earlier question about what I would put on my list of criteria for my perfect partner. Uh, Got to be a drinker. I, th I would find it very, very hard to sit at the table drinking wine um, while my partner opposite was, was drinking mineral water. I think that would be really hard. It might be good for me, but it would be, it would be really hard. Okay, so the question was, what was my favourite wine? Um, and the, the wine experts say there are no great wines, just great bottles. And, and I think that sort of reflects that to some degree, your great wine memories are actually not just associated with a particular wine, but with the occasion on which it was drunk. And I drank a wine, a champagne, from the wreck of a Swedish ship called the, or a ship on its way to Sweden called the Jan Koping. Um, in fact, it was on its way to Russia um, on a friend's 50th birthday, and it was a 99-year-old champagne, so it was a 1907 champagne. That would be the most memorable wine I've ever drunk. My, my wife is an inveterate margarita drinker. I have made many, many margaritas in my life. I make them better than most bars because I just follow the recipe and I don't add sugar syrup and so forth. And I actually like margaritas too. So standard margarita with a rim of salt, that's a pretty good cocktail. There is absolutely no doubt what my favorite way to eat lobster is. It is in the very salad, the recipe which comes from a man called T. Gezard, that Don makes in the Rosie Project. So that is lobster with avocado, mango, um, and wasabi dressing with uh, deep fried leek garnish. Salted caramel. And I can tell the difference between one ice cream and another. An interesting thing is, that one of the characteristics of Asperger's syndrome in some people, I mean, these things are not consistent, is, is often difficulties with flavors and so forth, really disliking certain flavors, but sometimes not being great at differentiating amongst flavors. So it may well be Don who can't tell one ice cream from another rather than the general population. The team would be New Zealand, so that's the easy part. Um, the idea of playing rugby union sort of appeals just because I absolutely don't have the body for it. And as a kid um, in New Zealand, that was the sport you played. Only wimps played soccer, everybody played rugby, and I was the smallest kid in the class. And that was you know, one of the banes of my childhood. <laughs> my superpower would be to be able to stop the world or to be able to move super fast. Take your pick as to which one, which one works, but I'd like to be able to move faster than everybody else so that I had, my, had enough time to work out what to do and, what to, and how to respond to that trick question. Time for the Stars by Robert Heinlein. Okay, I reckon I read that three or four times when I was a kid and when I was, saying it, when I was probably just pre-teens or, or early teens. And, and that was the stuff I grew up on, on science fiction adventures. And um, yeah, to have a real science fiction type space travel adventure, that'd be pretty good. Mm -hmm.